Hi, my name is Matthias and welcome to a new tutorial. FL Studio is such a complex program that it's hard to keep everything in your head or keep up with what's possible. But only if I know what's possible, I'm able to decide what to integrate in my daily workflow and what not. Here are 10 workflow features which can greatly improve editing speed or creativity. Ghost notes are a great feature to be able to see in context where to put notes for new instruments to let them play the correct pitch and in the wished position. Let's say you want to write some bass notes to match your chords. Instead of having to remember your chords, you can simply use ghost notes to get a visual indicator which chords are played when. And to be able to edit all notes without changing the view to the other instruments, there is another option. Editable Ghosts in the menu. And if you use it often, you can get used to the shortcut Ctrl Alt V on Windows, which should be Command Option V on a Mac. Editable Ghosts enable you to perform simple actions directly on the Ghost Notes to quickly perform some changes. You can click on single notes to preview them. Move notes, resize, shift left rack to copy them, shift right click to delete, or alt right click to preview ghost notes and the actual ones together. But keep in mind that as long as editable ghosts are activated, you cannot create new notes on top of the ghost notes, as the cursor changes from the pencil or brush tool to the move notes indicator, respectively to the resize tool at the edges. Little addition, you can even double click the ghost notes to open their settings window. While we are at it, there is quite an unknown feature in FL Studio, which can speed up editing. Sometimes you want perhaps to change the view to the corresponding generator of the ghost notes. Especially if patterns triggering multiple generators, or you switch patterns from the selector. If you don't know this method, you either have to go up to this menu and choose the one with the check mark, or you need to open the piano roll of this generator from the channel rack. But there is a much quicker way. Double right click one of the ghost notes. Shake1 from the Image Line forum showed me a nice trick for another modifier, which makes most sense with MIDI notes, but sometimes can be handy for playlist clips too. If you hold Shift while getting the double arrow on the end of an event and drag to the left or right, you can shift the end and start points of the notes in the same relationship without changing the whole length of this block. Very handy for chords to try out different rhythms or to hunt for a good crossfade point between audio clips. Hold Shift and Alt for disabling snapping. Another handy trick is to alt left click or drag different spots in the whole program to reset them to their default value. Very handy to go back to default in the piano roll for velocity or other note parameters. Especially because FL Studio paints in new notes depending on what you clicked last. You can easily reset vertical zoom in the piano roll or playlist Alt-click knobs instead of right-click menu and reset, Alt-click tension handles of envelopes, or Alt-click envelope points to snap them to the next grid measure. Kudos to Clint from the ImageLine forum, who made a little video how to create perfect curved shapes for the event automation by using the LFO. By right-click drag start to end 
We have a simple method to draw perfect line automation. But drawing a curved line by hand is more a nice try than precise. But playing around with the two LFOs can give really nice results for different shapes. Xbits from the KVR forum showed me another cool trick for all who do like better to work just with their mouse instead of holding down modifier keys. Double right click and hold over the grid in the piano roll or playlist enables muting as long as you hold down the right mouse button. Swiping over events mutes or unmutes them. When you let go the mouse button you are back to the tool you had selected before. As lately a user in the image line forum had problems with that, I like to bring this topic in here too. Sometimes it can happen that you want to reuse a name color icon combination you have already given in the project. An example would be to name the pattern equally to the generator. The last 10 names you have already used before are always shown in the little drop down menu and are directly available for further use. If though you open a saved project, this list is empty again, as these entries are just available per session and will be deleted once you close FL Studio. It can happen too that the wished entry is already overwritten when you have renamed more than 10 times other stuff. If your wished entry isn't available anymore, you can always bring it back by just open the renaming field of the one you want to reuse. Close it without any changes. And there it is again. It can happen that you've got multiple plugin windows open. For example by using our new feature that you can select multiple audio or instrument tracks and insert a new plugin on all of their mixer tracks at the same time. I often saw in other tutorials the advice to still use the older shortcut F12 to close them all at once. But F12 closes all windows, not just the plugin ones. And it's cumbersome having to bring back all the other windows again. Use Alt F12 instead. This really just closes all the plugin windows, but leaves the rest alone. Kudos to AudioBusters, who gave the right hint when this topic came up in the ImageLine forum. A user mentioned a very interesting technique from Kashmir to keep your reverb sound a bit more clean. I linked this video in the description, so be sure to watch this too. My settings here are overdriven that you can better hear the differences, please keep that in mind. When using reverbs with longer tails, which is common practice for many electronic music styles, the sound can easily get muddy because the reverb tails are bleeding into the next notes. For example the reverb from this A minor chord is still ringing out nearly to the middle of bar 3. When my MIDI already triggered the G major chord multiple times. The G major chord consists out of completely different notes, which leads in this moment to hearing eight different pitches at this point in time. Instead of just the four notes of the new chord, there is still the reverb tail of the four previous ones. Because of all notes being in the same scale, it still sounds harmonic, but it gets more and more dense. Luckily the reverb too in FL Studio works the same way like the from Kashmir used Ableton stock one. Just create a little automation clip. Automate the mute solo switch of the effect slot in the mixer. Place it at the start of each new chord. And make a deep little cut.
This doesn't just cut off the remaining reverb tail from the last notes, but clears the reverb buffer that the plugin basically starts fresh with the newly played notes, that it doesn't mix up the way it did before. For example, when I just automate the mix level, the buffers weren't cleared and the previous tail is still ringing out once the volume gets up again. A short automation of the mute solo button kills the reverb tail and there is silence after unmuting again. Hearing everything in context isn't a difference like day and night, but often it's the sum of little details which gives the final sound. Comparing these two reverbs in isolation though, The difference is very noticeable and gives a good hint what has changed. Did you ever thought of using complete audio files as single cycle oscillators? An often overlooked opportunity is getting interesting oscillator sounds without much hassle. And the more interest you have already created at the source, the less processing is needed afterwards to make it sound great. Just drop different audio files, while they shouldn't be too long, on the oscillator windows of Harmor or Citrus. The mouse cursor turns into a plus symbol and the audio file gets resampled and tuned correctly, that you can play it immediately, like for example your normal saw wave. Harmer offers this method even more advanced with its image section, where you can just play wished grains when setting the speed knob to zero. Citrus excels on the other hand with easier redrawing of imported shapes to fine tune the sound even more. And who says that you can use a convolution reverb just with impulse files of reverbs, EQs and stuff. Have a great time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.